All right, you guys, so we are going to read a little bit more um, about burning reactions right now. And specifically, we're going to read about carbon or hydrogen fuel. And so if you want to go ahead and pick one of these to read on your own, you can do that, or you can listen to me reading them both out loud in this video. But what we're looking to understand here is what exactly is happening during a burning reaction. And this is a part of an article called What Happens When Fuel Burns. We are going to read the rest tomorrow. But today we're going to look specifically at understanding what is going on during that reaction. Because as we saw in our results, um, oops, in our results, the steel, wool, and oxygen actually increased when there was uh, that reaction. So were atoms created? What is going on here? So let's go ahead and get started. Carbon containing fuels. Gasoline is just one of many fuels that contain carbon. One of the most common fuels in use today is ethanol, a substance made up of groups of two carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. Ethanol is made from corn and used as a substitute for gasoline. Like gasoline, Ethanol is a colorless liquid at room temperature. When you burn anything, including ethanol, you are mixing it with oxygen. So this is really important. I'm going to have our highlighter here, um, and I mentioned that before, but when you burn anything, it's a reaction with oxygen. So oxygen was actually one of our reactants in our previous investigation. However, just having oxygen around isn't enough to make something burn. This reaction only happens at high temperature. Okay, so that's why we had to light it on fire to cause that reaction to start occurring. Burning reactions release energy in the forms of heat and light, but these chemical reactions result in more than just energy. See the diagram to learn more. Okay, interesting. So I'm gonna actually change to my pen here. So here is my ethanol, uh, that is the fuel in this case. And that, for example, would be kind of one of our reactants, just like the steel wool, the thing that is actually burning. Now in the text, we realized that what is occurring here is that we are causing a reaction with oxygen gas. Um, and because it's a gas, that means that when we were measuring our reactants, that actually was not part of the mass. So if we go back to our, our last slide, the, the gas, the oxygen gas, if I wanna write this down, was not included here. So we actually were finding only the, the, um, the atoms that were in the steel wool which is something that's really important for us to realize. Now, in this reaction, the ethanol and the oxygen rearrange to form carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and water, which is a liquid. Interesting. Now, if you notice, the oxygen atoms that were part of this oxygen gas have rearranged to become attached to some of the atoms in the ethanol. So this rearrangement now has made it so that these oxygen atoms are now being included in the mass. So if we're looking back here, atoms were not actually appearing. They were always there in the air. We just were not getting them on our mass at that time. Let's take a look and make sure that this is how hydrogen fuel works as well. Like gasoline, hydrogen fuel is a fuel that can be burned to power cars and buses. However, unlike gasoline, hydrogen does not contain carbon. It is a substance made of hydrogen atoms. When you burn anything, including hydrogen fuel, you're mixing it with oxygen. So again, we want to get our pen here, you are mixing it with oxygen, just like before. Still having oxygen around won't cause something to burn on its own. This reaction only happens at high temperature. So let's take a look at our reaction here. Again, we have 
a substance that is being burned, the hydrogen gas, actually this time, um, this was a gas, this was a liquid ethanol, uh, and again, we are mixing it with that oxygen, which is also a gas, and notice this rearrangement then again causes those oxygen atoms to become part of those molecules. So we actually are seeing the same results again, that even in burning, atoms are not disappearing. All of the atoms that were part of the reactants rearrange to form the products. Now we might wanna go ahead and test this a little further in our next lesson by testing some more reactions in the digital model. Because as we know, the digital model really allows us to see the atoms moving and allows us to track them. And we'll be able to see whether this really is what is being shown in the digital model. Great job today, you guys. I will see you next time for our last lesson in chemical reactions. See you later.